What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. My grandmother had the funniest saying. Two heads is better than one, even if one's a head of lettuce. And I have said that saying a million times over the years. But I have run into a circumstance here recently, and it, it kind of involves a funny story. It's actually something you guys can learn from especially out buying cars and whatnot. You know, sometimes it's nice to have a set of eyes come look at a car for you, you know, whether they're closer to it or whatnot. You know, buying in the blind is a tricky thing. You know, it takes a little, takes a little faith, a little luck. You know, usually if, you know, if you ask the right questions and they're truthful about the product, it ends up what? It ends up okay. So I had a fellow in California interested in a car I had. Sent many cars to California. Told them all about it. That's the beauty of the warehouse. We have full Wi-Fi internet here in the warehouse. I can go FaceTime, show you everything about this car. I can just pinpoint every little thing. Nitpick. Hey, I want to see this. Let's try it out. You know, let's do this. Let's do this. You know, showed him everything about it. He's in love with it. Keep in mind, I can see their face, and I love it. Because I'm doing what I do right. I sell. And I can just see that look. He was comfortable with the price. And he said, do you mind if I hire a car inspector to come look at the car? And I don't mind a bit, because I've had very good luck with these guys. And this is my thing with car inspectors and things of that nature. There's some guys out there that know their stuff. You know, they deal with classic cars. They know what to look for. You know, they don't have to be a numbers guru or anything, but they can tell you condition wise what that car looks like, you know, and it just gives you another opinion on this car. And it helps build comfort in your buyer. I'm totally okay with that. Two instances that didn't work out that way with me, one recent, one a little well later back, with a classic car inspector. I had a first-gen Camaro, had it for sale online. Guy says, I'm gonna hire an inspector to come look at it. The thing you gotta understand about these inspectors, are there's, there's some that are very sharp and they know what they're doing. They know their stuff. They know what bad body work looks like. They know what, you know, hidden rust damage. They know, you know, shoddy wiring, yada, yada, yada. You know, cars making funny noises, things of that nature. They know what that looks like. But you also have some of these guys and, and really telling the good from the bad is hard to do. I'll be honest with you, you have better luck finding a, a good car than finding a good inspector. So anyway, I had this Camaro for sale. And this guy came down from Charlotte, which is an hour and a half drive this inspector did. And you know, this guy was talking him up, he's wanting to buy the car. So this guy knows his stuff. This guy pulled up in an Escort station wagon. Hey, can't judge a book by its cover. He gets out, and no flashlight, really doesn't look like a car guy. You know, he says, can you cut the lights on for me? Sure, so I turn the headlights on on the car. And he walks around and he said, can you hit that left blinker? Sure. Right blinker. Can you push the brake pedal? He's standing behind the car. Okay, all the lights work. He goes, I need to check for rust damage under the bottom. Do you have a screwdriver I can borrow? I said, what the hell do you need a screwdriver for? He goes, well, and he's got this little clipboard and he's checking. And he says, well, it says on the sheet, I need to take a screwdriver and jam the floorboard to make sure it's not soft. Let me tell you something, bud. I'm going to tell you something. I'll hand you a screwdriver and you're more welcome to get under it and you can look at it any way you want. But if you jam a screwdriver anywhere in my car, we'll stick it up your ass. Yeah, yeah, you probably wouldn't like that. I said, no, I don't think anybody would. And I said, the car's nice and solid under the bottom. You know, you're more welcome to take pictures, whatever you want to do. We can stick it on a lift, whatnot. 
because this guy was reading from this little checklist that I'm sure he downloaded off the internet or something and called himself a classic car inspector. And these guys charge hundreds of dollars for this. And the man didn't buy the car because, well, I didn't get a chance to really see the bottom of it or test it like I should have. How in the hell is jamming something with a screwdriver testing it? You know, I mean, you, you don't need to damage it to, to test it. I mean, it makes no sense. Well, anyway, and I sold the car later on and, and it actually ended up making a really good connection with a client that I sold several cars over the years after that. Fast forward to recently, I had a really nice GTO. You guys see in the videos, 70 GTO convertible. And I'll be honest with you, you got to think about this for just one second. I'm not patting myself on the back, but I've been doing this a long time. I'll be honest with you, I can tell you more about a car in 30 seconds than most people can in a week, just looking at it, you know, and, you know, a lot of it, I know what to look for, you know, it takes a little more shiny paint to really get me excited, you know, I mean, I'm looking at things, I know where to look, I know problem areas on different cars, and I'm not saying I know everything, but I've seen a lot, I've seen a lot of you know, patch jobs and things like that, I know what it takes to fix a car right. You know, I've got background in auto body. I've got background with paint. I know what it takes to make it right. I know what it takes to fix something right. You know, so naturally, I know also know what it looks like when it's not fixed right. You know, I mean, you remember from like my VinWiki videos at CarMax. I mean, I can look, I mean, unless it's just fixed killer. I mean, you know, a, a botched job in body work, hell, 10 feet away. Damn, look at the side of that thing. You know, I mean, you can just tell. I mean, there's little telltale signs all over cars you can look for. But anyway, so needless to say, you know, think about it. I use that same mindset when I buy. You know, this isn't, we sell a lot of cars here, but this isn't a production line. You know, like right now, we've sold down just a little bit, but because there's just no good cars out there and you don't overpay. Well, this is my logic with that. I would much rather have an empty building or a building with a couple nice cars that I'd be proud to drive there that you don't have to make excuses for than a building full of shitty cars at the end of the day. Because keep in mind, everything I sell has my face attached to it. And, and I'm just really particular about that. I've always been a quality over quantity guy. This guy calls about this GTO. He's in California. Everything's you know mimicking this Camaro. Anyway, we FaceTime. He's in love with this car. I'm seeing his face. He's smiling ear to ear. Bright red drop top GTO. Then I'll be honest with you, on a scale of one to 10, was a strong nine and a half all the way around. He goes, you mind if I hire an inspector just to put another set of eyes on us? But I don't mind a bit. Don't mind a bit. I'll be sure to meet him over there and I'll show him anything he wants. Keep in mind, I've already supplied him with pictures on the bottom of it. He's heard it run everything but that's what it takes to make your customer happy you do it that's part of it this is a customer service job he hires a guy and he tells me he's going to call you and set up a time well the guy calls me sets up a time first strike just right off the bat you know me and him get to talking and the very first thing out of his mouth is i heard you're pretty popular on youtube you know kind of brush that off whatever he said well i'll meet you at your warehouse at you know four o'clock totally fine. I'm a busy guy, but you know, when I tell somebody I'm going to be somewhere, I'm there. I'm very punctual. You know, sometimes things happen. You know, if I'm five minutes late, there's usually a good reason why. Well, I get the warehouse about 345, you know, just make sure everything's all right. Fired a little GTO up, backed it out right here in just the main, right in front of the gas station where they walk around and do whatever he wants, you know, lifts wide open, we can zip it up on the lift, whatever he wants to do. He gets here about 445. Guy comes pulling up, you know, driving a little Hyundai or whatever, which is another red flag, a car guy that drives a Hyundai. But, like I said, you're going to judge a book by its cover. And he gets out. No clipboard, no flashlight, no nothing. He's wearing short pants. I'm washing cars today. This is why I'm wearing shorts. But, you're know, wearing shorts, T-shirt, normal dude. Gets out, walks around. And the very first thing he said, he said, so you're from Greenville? Yes, sir, born and raised. He goes, man, I hate it here. He goes, I'm from Florida, and you know, I just, and just making fun of the area. Well, first of all, don't shit on my hometown. You know, this is where I live, bud. I mean, I, I'm happy to be a fan of it. If I didn't, I'd move. 
I highly suggest he do the same thing. Where's that GTO at? It's a bright red car with three inch letters on the side of it that say GTO. And you're asking me where the GTO is. We don't have a building full of GTOs. We had, we had a few cars in here, but I mean, it's pretty obvious which car was the GTO. So that one right there, bud. Oh yeah. You got a flashlight? Yeah, I do. So I went, went over to the toolbox there and grabbed him a flashlight. And he said, yeah, he goes, I don't normally look at old cars. He said, I'm more of a Maserati guy. Another huge red flag. He's walking around this GTO and he goes, will you pop the hood on it? So I walk around the front. He said, I want you to pop the hood. I said, the hood latches in the front. This guy knows nothing about collector cars at all. So I get to fill them out a little bit. And he hands me his card. He flips it over. He tents windows also. Another red flag. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with tinting windows. Hey, that's great. That's a skill. But the thing is, you got to understand, my guy that tints my window sells dope too. You know, like that's my window tinting guy. He doesn't inspect classic cars because he don't know anything about classic cars. But anyway, so this guy's walking around the car and he's he's literally lost as a newborn baby in this thing. And I'm showing him this and I'm pointing out this, trying to help him out, you know, and, and this. And I said, these are things you need to look for. I mean, I'm opening the doors and all this stuff. Why well, the top down on the car, obviously, just like it was in the video. Top was down the car. Top's been down for two months, you know? He goes, well, how's the top work? I said, works great. Pop Tano cover off of it right quick. Fired the car up. Hit the switch. Car's got a brand new top on it. Top's been down for two months. Obviously, it's going to have some wrinkles in it because it's been folded up for two months. You know, and I told him, it's got a few wrinkles. Top's brand new. I said, you know, all this obviously will go away, you know, here about two hours out in the sun. Yeah, that top, though, it ain't supposed to be like that. I think it needs a top. I'm like, the car's got a new top on it. And it still had, I don't know if you guys will see it in the video. I don't think we ever shot a video with the top up. But it actually has the tag still on it from the upholstery shop. I'm just listening to him talk at this point, you know. Sure, whatever. So we're walking around the car, and he goes, what's this worth? And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm asking this for it. And I said, you know, these GTOs are a little popular. He goes, man, that much? I figured something like this would be half that, probably. And I'm like, well, you figured wrong, bud. He goes, man, what'd you pay for it? And I said, well, you know, just enough to buy it. That's what. That's how much I paid for it. I, I hate that question. First of all, that's so unprofessional. I mean, just beyond unprofessional. And, I mean, this guy's a joke. I mean, just total joke. I'm texting the guy, literally, as we're walking around, telling him, like, you wasted your money. He goes, I need to drive it. And I said, you're not driving anything of mine. I said, I will take you up the road in it. So I zip him up the road in it. He goes, yeah, we need to stick it up on the lift too and look at it. Sure. So we zip it on the lift right quick first. And he looks under the bottom of it. He goes, it's a little dirty on here. I said, well, the car's been driven, bud. I said, I'm sure your car looks a little dirty under the bottom too. And he goes, but it looks like it's relatively solid. I said, it's, it's very solid. It's a rust-free car, you know? I mean, he goes, yeah, you know. There's some, there's some stuff that needs some work, but I think it's all right. I'm like, I mean, keep in mind, this is a frame off restore car. Every brake line, every hose, everything's been blown apart. The car's probably better than it was new under the bottom. It might've been a little dirty from road grit, but that's it. And he, this guy's just picking this thing apart. He doesn't even know what he's talking about, which is the worst part. So we take the car on a road test. He goes, this thing get a wheel? I said, I'm sure it would. And I just kept driving. So the only part of the car, he goes, well, I'll turn my report into the buyer. And he has me a car. He said, if you need any windows tinted, give me a call. I'm like, yeah, you bank on that. Well, first of all, then the guy didn't get pictures of it that he needed. So he asked me for the pictures for his report. So I had to take pictures and send them to him, which no problem. I had the majority of them on my phone. He turns them into the guy in California. And of course, this guy's telling him, and it's a little dirtier on the bottom. It's this, and it's really not an accurate description. You know, so that's the thing. You know, the two heads are better than one. Not always. Because this guy's opinion, who knows? He doesn't know a GTO from a hole in the ground at all. He has no clue. So that's the thing about doing, you know, a little background on these guys when you hire them. Just because they're a car inspector doesn't necessarily mean 
they're the car inspector you need. And like I said, I've worked with some of these guys in the past. They were sharp as a tack, son. And they'd walk around and they'd know what to look for. You know, they had their flashlight. You know, I've had guys come up, they had creepers. I mean, like even if you didn't have a lift, I mean, they were going to get under it and look at it. And that's the thing. That's the way they're supposed to be. Not, oh my God, this thing's worth that. I mean, didn't even know what the damn GTO was in the building. And the thing was crazy. So naturally, the guy calls me that night. And he goes, well, I've got a few concerns. He says it needs a top. I said, sir, the car has a brand new top on it. He goes, well, it's probably going to cost, what, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 to put a top on it. And this is where I get at. This is where I get frustrated. I know I'm not seeing things. The car has a new top on it. I told you it has a new top on it. Don't talk to me like I'm lying to you. So now this little dipshit has pissed the customer, or got the customer all worried for nothing about a convertible top that it doesn't need. No holes, no scratches, creases is what he said. Creases in the top. Well, I'm probably going to put a top on it. And he's just it got it sold in his head. This car needs a top on it. And I literally just told this guy, he goes, what are you going to take a little less for if I'm going to put a top on it? I said, the car's not for sale for you. He goes, excuse me? I said, I'm not going to sell it. I've told you three times in the last five minutes that this car has a brand new top on it. And you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. I don't have to lie to you to sell you a car. Have a good day, sir. The very next phone call I took on that GTO, this man collects GTOs. 64 through 72, he owns every year. And he has them all displayed. His mother bought a 64 GTO brand new. He bought that car back and frame off restored it. And then he won a 65 and a 6 and a 7 and an 8 and 9 and so on. He had every year but a 70. This guy come down the next day. And he brought a little square body truck with him. He goes, man, he said, if you don't want it, he said, but I got a nice little square body truck you might be interested in. I always love square bodies. I said, I'll bring it down. I said, hell, if you don't buy my GTO, I'll buy your truck. You know, it's whatever. He walks around and he looks and he looks at the numbers and he slides up under it and looks at it. And he goes, this is a nice ass GTO you got. I said, thank you, bud. He goes, he said, somebody really, really, you know, did a lot of hard work on this thing. I mean, got it where it needed to be. He didn't walk around it three times maybe 10 minutes total of looking at it. He goes, what did you give me for my black truck? I told him. I'm fair with that. I'll take it. And I started thinking to myself, and, and the funniest part was the very end of it. He looks, he said, man, that top's beautiful. He said, you know how hard it is to get a convertible top put on that tight? He said, that top's gorgeous on that thing. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm sitting here yesterday was arguing with a man about the top on this car. And now I got a guy bragging about it. And all the things that this dipshit nitpicked about, this guy's like, man, this thing's clean as a pen. It was all over. And keep in mind, if I was going to take anyone's opinion on my GTO, the man that's got 12 of them is probably the guy I'm going to listen to. And I absolutely loves the car. Literally, hell, we took a selfie with it. He was so excited. And then... He got at home and was just telling me all about it. He said, man, I love that little GT. I think it's road like a dream. That's the thing that's crazy. And the reason I tell people, you got to watch who you hire to be your eyes and ears. You know, you don't want to necessarily send a stranger out to look at a car, but do your homework and make sure the guy you're hiring to do the job is doing the job he's supposed to be doing. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. So I had a fellow in California interested in a car I had. Is that rain? Can you hear it? He loved it. Like I said, we FaceTimed around the car and he loves it. You may have to cut that and they fix it. He goes, and he goes by the name Porkchop. Everybody has a buddy that tents windows named Porkchop. Matt, the camera guy shaking his head like, hell yeah, you know Porkchop.